So one of the games I was looking forward to that I talked about in my March upcoming Nintendo Switch games video, which hopefully you watched that one already, was Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning for the Nintendo Switch. I knew the original game had come out on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Somehow, allegedly, Kurt Schilling, the baseball player, had a hand in it. And then it got a re-release with improved visuals on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with all the DLC included, and the game kind of looked a bit like Skyrim. Beyond that though, I really knew nothing about this game, but considering open world action RPGs aren't all that common on the Switch, I was intrigued to check out this game. That's honestly one of the things I enjoy about the later ports that come to the Switch. They're usually games that people seem to enjoy on other platforms but maybe didn't do all that well, but I never got around to playing them originally. Now what was originally going to be a Let's Play style of video ended up becoming a full on video though because I really just couldn't stop playing this game. So what is Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning all about, and why is it one of the best new Nintendo Switch games that you aren't playing right now? Let's go ahead and dive into it. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video. But without any further ado, let's talk about Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning for the Nintendo Switch and see what this game is all about. For the story portion of this game, I will keep it short and sweet because, well, I honestly have trouble paying attention to these long-winded medieval arts and magic stories. I don't know, I probably have ADD or something, who knows. Anyways, basically, you are dead. You're about to be put into a furnace to cremate your body, but you come back to life, bewildering everyone in the land of Amalar. In this land, there are different groups of people, such as humans, elves, dwarves, fey, which are fairies, but then there is a group that wants to eliminate all of them and cause chaos in Amalar, the Tuatha. Their leader hates you, follows you, and tries to figure out why you're still alive, along with all the other people. There's lots of talk about, you know, fate, destiny, all that sort of stuff plays into the main story, as your character, which you created, is basically trying to find out who he is, why he has the abilities he has, and, well, why he isn't dead. And no one else in the world can really explain it either. It's kind of interesting, very Elder Scrolls-ish in my opinion, but I usually found myself being more interested in the random side quests in the game because of the fact that, well, those story arcs are usually much shorter and just better at keeping my attention. Like I said, ADD out the ass here, folks. Ooh, a soda. Gameplay-wise is where Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning really got my attention though because I went into this game thinking it was essentially an Elder Scrolls style game and in some aspects it definitely is. The quest system is very similar to an Elder Scrolls game in which you have main quests, side quests, additional quests that you get from random people, groups that you can join that then have additional quests as well, and so on. Everything is divided up so you can choose which quest you want to encounter at what time. And like an Elder Scrolls game, you visit towns, talk to people, can rob people, buy weapons, potions, all that sort of stuff. As you play the game and your character levels up, you then get different attributes which you can expand upon, based upon three main abilities, Might, Sorcery, and Finesse. Leveling these things will give you things like more magic attacks, more attacks that you can use with different weapons, and so on and so forth. So on the surface, yes, it is very Scrolls-like, which is cool, but when you play an Elder Scrolls game, the combat is usually, well, it's a bit on the slower side. And as you can see from the footage so far, though, in Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning, the combat is, well, anything but slow. It's extremely fast and fluid, and all of the weapons that you get and acquire actually feel different from one another. You have a main weapon and a secondary weapon that you can use at any time, along with a shield to block or parry incoming attacks, and a dodge button to roll out of the way of an enemy. You could bring up the magic attacks at any time and unleash them, along with hot map things like potions to the d-pad which you can use and don't require you to stop the action. It just automatically uses the potion, which is nice when you're in the heat of a battle. In the upper left of the screen you can see that you have three bars, health, fate, and mana. Health and mana are pretty self-explanatory, how much health you have left and how much magic you have left, but the fate meter is actually really cool. Essentially as you are fighting and killing enemies, your fate meter will build up. Once it's full, clicking the ZR and ZL buttons on the Nintendo Switch will enable you to enter a slowdown mode, which you then get a lot of buffs and your attacks do much more damage. It's best to use this on a group of enemies or on a boss character though because after you defeat all the enemies by pressing A you will do a really cool finishing move that will require you to tap a random button. If you can tap the button fast enough you can get up to a 100 XP bonus to your character which is essential in leveling up. 
Add into the fact that there's a billion different weapons in the game from staffs to long blades to my current favorite, the shock rams, and there's tons of different ways to actually play the game as well. You can focus on magic, you can focus on stealth, you can focus on balls to the walls and go head in first. And the combat itself is, like I said, just so fast and fluid that it never really gets boring. And it's very fun because of how snappy everything is and how many different things you could do within the actual combat as well. Presentation wise, I was pleasantly surprised with Kingdoms of Amalur re reckoning for the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, this is based on the HD remaster that released on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One like we talked about earlier. And while the game's engine does feel a bit last gen at times, I couldn't help but sort of get an old school Fable vibe from the visual style. The map itself is absolutely massive, even more so since all the DLC is in the game. So there's a ton of different areas that you visit from deserts to lush gardens and much more. Some of the characters and enemies were designed by Todd McFarlane of the Spawn franchise, no, not Spawn Wave, and you can see it in these character designs for sure. Enemies have a good variety as well, from little shrimp characters that you'll take out in no time to big hulking creatures that will take much more effort, along with of course boss battles. I will say that the character models themselves as far as humans and NPCs definitely have that sort of Xbox 360 look to them, but it doesn't do much to detach me from the game or anything, especially when you see some of the colors and the backdrops for the environments that you visit. Handheld mode is very solid as well, with all the textures still looking nice and crisp, no Vaseline smear or additional slowdown. But for me, I definitely think the po colors pop a lot more when playing in dock mode on the good old LG CX TV. On the sound side of things, the audio in the game is really good with some Elder Scrolls-esque music and some decent voice acting. Sometimes though, there are some weird ass sound effects I noticed. Very early in the game, a fae is attacked and is in a village, and while you're talking to characters trying to figure out what happened to her, she has like a really loud moan, and yeah, supposedly she got like stabbed and she's bleeding out, but really it just it sounds like she got stabbed with something else. I'll, I'll let you sort of leave that up to your imagination. Alright, so it seems like Kingdoms of Amalar Re-Reckoning for the Switch is a perfect game, right? Plays great, lots to do, lots of quests, looks good, sounds good, tons of customization, but what are the drawbacks? Well, we do have a few to go over. First off, the camera isn't the greatest. Like, it's okay, you have control over it, but it doesn't really lock onto enemies like most modern games do. You can recalibrate the camera at any time by pressing in the R stick, and there are some additional options to change things with the camera itself, but it still definitely doesn't feel perfect and could have used some more tightening up in my opinion. Another issue that Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning on the Switch has is occasional slowdown. Now for the most part the game does run really well, but there are definitely times that the frame rate bogs down a little bit and it's definitely noticeable. Sometimes it can just be a certain area you are in, like once I was in an underground area and for some reason a small section of it had slowdown but the rest of it didn't. But for the most part you sort of see this slowdown when you're doing a large group battle where there are multiple enemies on the screen. Now it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, like I said, it is noticeable. The third issue I had with Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning was that it throws a lot of things at you at once, and I feel like it doesn't really do a great job at telling you all the different things you can do within the game, such as forging your own weapons and creating your own potions and whatnot. You just kind of stumble upon things like that on your own, and you don't really learn about it until you actually find like a blacksmith table and go up to the table, then you get some vague instructions on how to create your own weapons and whatnot. Also, one time I fell onto the map for like 5 seconds and then came back, which was kind of weird. Now, none of these things are really game breaking or whatever, but I did want to mention them because, I mean, I keep it real here. Overall though, Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning is really surprising me a lot. While games like this are very common on other platforms, besides games like Skyrim and Dragon's Dogma on the Switch, there isn't a lot of open sprawling action RPG games on the system, and it's a genre that, I mean let's be real, it's perfectly suited for the ability to play it on the go, or at home, or whenever you want to play it. It's definitely not the most original game ever, but what it sets out to do I think it does pretty well, and is a welcome addition to the Nintendo Switch at just $40, with everything included on the cartridge if you wanted to go the physical route. There's a ton of content in the game with all the quests and additional DLC, and overall it's just a really nice tight package from THQ Nordic. If you've played the game before, obviously there's really no reason to pick it up again, but if you haven't, and you are primarily a Nintendo Switch player, you are getting a great port of a really fun game that a lot of people missed out on when it initially came out, and will more than tide you over while you're waiting for another Nintendo Switch game to come out. 
Alrighty, so those are my thoughts on Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning for the Nintendo Switch. I gotta say, I was definitely surprised by this. This game, it came in a couple days ago, and I just let it sit there, and like, I was just like, eh, you know, I'll get to it whenever. But once I started playing it, like, hours were just flying by, and I was like, wow, this is a really fun game. It's a really solid game. I'm surprised more people aren't talking about it, so we gotta give a little shine here on the channel. But let me know in the comments section down below if you have played this game before, whether it was the original release on the Xbox 360, in the PlayStation 3, the Re-Reckoning Edition on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, or if this is your first time checking out this game. And if it is, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the Nintendo Switch version. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well. Check out the Crash Bandicoot video from last weekend if you're sort of on the fence about that game. Look at the March upcoming Nintendo Switch games video because some of those games still aren't out yet. Just sort of give you an idea what's coming out at the tail end of the month. And as always, I'll I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.